Hello, everybody, and welcome to Scotsophronio episode 17. Uh, dude, okay, so a couple things, uh, which may turn out to be a few or even a handful, maybe several, almost a dozen. I'm not sure. I'm just calling back another episode. Uh, I, I am back in the closet. And you could probably tell just based on how much better this sounds and how much more in my face you may think this sounds. Um, it just feels so, it feels right, you know? I'm like talking into my microphone with the headphones on and I am like, my ears are happy. My, if, if my ears could smile, they would, they, they would be, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, episode 17. Um, I was thinking about episode 17 and then just like I do with a lot of the, uh, based on what number episode it is, uh, kind of makes me think of, you know, the number, uh, and the number 17. Um, when I think about the number 17, what comes to mind is, uh, I graduated high school when I was 17. Um, cause I have like a late August birthday. So, you know, like I was, I started, I started kindergarten when I had like just turned five and I wasn't held back any, any times, which was one of the bi bi biggest and best accomplishments of my life. <laughs> uh, it wasn't held back. So, you know, I, I kept that, that train going and, uh, which ended up having me you know, I, I turned 18 after high school. Um, so I, I was, uh, I graduated high school 17. I got my license when I was 17. Um, and as I was thinking about that, I was like, well, like what, what was I into besides like, I mean, it was 2006 when I was, when I was 17 turning 18. So what was that? Um, 2006. I think I was still like around senior year. I, I started to like, like go out on my own as far as, um, what I was sort of interested in, you know, when that starts happening where like you grow up around people and like you kind of associate with what everybody else is doing. I don't know. Um, that makes sense, right? Like you, and it's still true today. Like you, who you surround yourself with, you like become a part of that, which is like, could be a really good thing or like the worst thing. And you don't realize it until you come to a realization. You're like, Oh, what the hell am I doing with my life? What are these people having me do? Why am I even hanging around these people? I don't know. Um, but I started one big thing for me was like, I started listening to my own music and my favorite my favorite band at that time was uh fallout boy um and i think like looking back on it i was like well, well what what song like what was my favorite song at that time and i uh i think it i think it was this one and it's a fallout boy song and uh it's uh this one where is your boy tonight i hope he is a gentleman like what does that even mean maybe he won't find out what i know you were the last good thing about this part of town so angsty and this is like the hardest music that i like knew i was like oh man this is like yeah Take this to your grave. What, like the album? I just picture some guy in a casket with his arms crossed and like in his hands on his chest is like the, gr <laughs> the fallout boy. Take this to your grave. Like compact disc sleeve. You know what compact discs are? CDs. You know what blows my mind? 
CDs are going to be, are, okay, sentences, words, hi. Uh, CDs are going to be stop, C, <laughs> CDs are going to be stop sold. CDs aren't going to be sold at like Best Buy anymore, like after this year, if not already. I don't know. I heard that somewhere and I was like, oh my God, like everything's fucking digital now. How crazy is that? Like what? Like kids now? That's just, that's so crazy. Because you have your phone and your car, you just plug it into the friggin' cord. Every car has a USB cord, which is insane. I remember when those first came out and it was like, oh, I can hook up my iPod classic and like you spin the, the touch wheel thing. And you like, and you play your song. Like what? Kids don't even have those anymore. I recently, well, not recently, like semi-recently, it's like two months ago, I found my, uh, <laughs> I found my iPod Classic in all. I have so much stuff on that, and it's like 120 gigs, and my phone's sitting here. My phone, which is like more futuristic than the iPod Classic, only has like 16 fucking gigs on it. Even that sentence is like, my phone only has 16 gigs. What am I supposed to do with that? But that's crazy. 120 gigs at the time. I was like, dude, I'm. this is an investment. Little did I know, 20 years down the line, I'd find it again. And like, yeah, this thing, maybe not 20 years. No, that's 10, 10 years, 15, 15 tops. Okay. Maybe not 20, but 15, a little over a baker's dozen of years. I'll find it again and be doing the same thing, just listening to music. I'm surprised I can still charge the thing with the rate Apple is like, oh, you need a lightning cord to do this stuff and that, whatever. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, that was that was my favorite song. Grand Theft Autumn. Where, where is your, what is it? Grand Theft Autumn, where is your boy? Grand Theft Autumn. Like what? What is that? They're stealing, stealing the the fall season. To the point where it's like a felon, a felony. You're a felon, for stealing the season of autumn. I don't get it. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that makes sense at all. I don't know. Uh, okay, so I was, again, I'm in this. Um, this stand-up class i don't know it's like beating a dead horse with this like oh yeah we all know you're in a stand-up class whatever but that's all this that's what's going on in my life right now i got a stand-up class and it's becoming less stressful i think what i came up with this past time like in within like the last week and it was kind of crazy i was watching ricky gervais's ricky gervais's uh ricky gervais's stand-up special on Netflix which is so funny and his sense of humor is like I love it I I think it's it he's very aware of how comedy is now and just how different you have to be but he really doesn't give a shit and he just talks about whatever which is I think that's so rad but uh I was watching it and then like something like popped in my head and it, it wasn't even related to what he was saying. It was just like, Oh dude, I, I gotta write this down. So I grabbed like this little, uh, one of those like moleskin books things that I have. I have them all over the place. Like in my room, there's like all these like, I don't, I think it's like fake leather. It's not, it's not genuine leather books, man. But all these like books kind of things with like journal pages and those ribbon things that like mark the pages where you're at or whatever. I have like a ton of those all over my room and I just picked the nearest one up and I started writing. But I was writing at a pace where like my hand couldn't keep up. So <laughs> my my writing was like huge and I was writing with a pencil. Like remember pencils? Remember those? There's like this like graphite in the in the wood and you like sharpen it and it's got an eraser at the end. Remember those? I'm not sure. 
maybe you all have like a, you know, an image of what a pencil is and, and you guys could, you know, see what I'm getting, getting at, you know, this is what I'm drawing up for you guys describing a pencil. Uh, and I was just writing away and my writing was so big and it was like one sentence per page, but I like had to get it down. And then I went over it the next day and I was like, okay, this, okay, this makes sense. And I was able to like collect all those thoughts and put them down and kind of work it. And then I had the, uh, the stand up class on St. Patrick's day. And I was able to like kind of go up there and work it and it was decent. And I have, you know, some stuff to, to rework and, and everything, but I f I'm feeling a lot better about it. And I'm glad it like, it, you know, stuff like that just pops in your head like late at night and you could be doing like anything, but it's the times like when you wake up and when you go to bed that you're alone with your thoughts and they're yours alone. And they're like un, uh, what is it called? Unaltered. Un, they're not like influenced by other people talking. You're just sitting there and soaking up like everything you did that day, what happened. So you kind of like, and is this just me? Am I, am I crazy? I think everybody should like write down something, anything before they go to bed or when they wake up. I think that's, I think it's just smart to do. And it's like part of being a human is like shit happens to you and you're just like, okay, what did that mean? And you have, you actually have the time to think once your pillow, once your pillow comes in contact with the back of your head, you know, and you could just sit there with your thoughts and kind of think about like who you are as a person. Who am I? I don't know if this is bonkers, but this is what I do. So whatever. And if you chose to press play on this and li and you're listening, you know, that's what's going on. You know, I'm like kind of weird and I have to be a weirdo to like stand in my closet and talk into a microphone with other people in mind that are going to be listening to this. I don't know, whatever. Um, but Okay, so, yeah, that so that's that. I don't I really have a transition into what I'm going to talk about. I guess I do. Well, like, with that stand-up thing, I I was listening to, um, like, past Scotophronio episodes, um, and, okay, first of all, Scot's Life, the episode, like, the first episode is by far my favorite episode because it's not, it, it's just... It came from like a good place. I was happy at the time. I was trying something new and I had, I had intentions of like, you know, like, what is this going to look like? I'm going to put this out there for people to listen to. And this is what it is. And, you know, it, it was, it wasn't like a chore, which is, is kind of how Schizophrenia has become. And, um, and I, I don't want to admit that, but that's just the reality of the situation. Um, and I feel like I'm at a point now and I'm going to be, um, stopping the job at the coffee shop. Um, just cause I, I'm, I'm just not I'm just straight up, not happy. And I like, I stuff has happened, um, with schizophrenia where I'm like, you know, this could be so much better and I need to just, I need to, I need to re reevaluate everything. And I want to have better intentions with schizophrenia because I, I think it could be a lot more than what it is and what I've been doing. And so part of that is go, getting back in the closet, starting back where I started and going from there. Cause honestly, the making videos, like it's one thing to stream and play video games and stuff. But it's another thing to sit there and like outside of my room so it doesn't sound like this, which is how I want it to sound. And it's it's this 
it's this thing and I have to turn on and I have to like be on because there's a mic. Uh, well, there's not only a microphone in front of me, which is like, I'm fine. I'm like a lot more comfortable with that now, but there's a video camera and I, there's something about it that like the podcast needs to be separate in a way that like the quality is there and like, because the nature of this podcast is just me being me and my thoughts and, and, you know, it's just getting out there. Um, I feel like this is what it needs to be. I need to get back in the closet and, and, and just, just be here in, in my own little booth here. And, uh, I'm happy about it. And, uh, Anyways, that was a tangent, but, um, yeah, so part of, I was listening to past podcasts and I came across the, the emotional support peacock story again. And, uh, I was talking to a coworker and that kind of came up and I'm, I kind of have a little bit of that, um, not specifically the peacock, but kind of emotional support animals in my stand up routine that I've, I've come up with and, I was talking to a coworker about it and she was like, okay, dude, just look up pebbles, the hamster. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that sounds incredible. Like just, and she was like, just Google pebbles, the hamster and like emotional support hamster story. You have to, you have to read it. And I was like, okay, so uh, a couple of days ago, I, I I looked it up, and this uh, this is off of the website. I just searched Pebbles the Hamster, and the first page that pops up is thepointsguy.com. I don't I don't even know. the points guy. I don't really know what this uh, this website's about, but. Um, so the the uh, the article reads okay it says news from February tenth, twenty eighteen, so like over a month ago, but uh, still, it says Pebbles the hamster finds watery death after Spirit Airlines passenger flushes him down a toilet. Dude, okay, so I'm just gonna read. This is by Catherine Fan. I don't I don't know who that is, but she wrote this article, and uh, it's Fan with an F. F A N. So not not P H, which is <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't I don't know why I tried to envision who like what Catherine Fan looks like, but because it's spelled with an F, now I'm picturing like a stay-at-home mom blogger lady instead of an Asian woman that, like... <laughs> anyway, whatever, dude. Okay, so it reads, After a peacock was rejected from a recent United flight, South Florida passenger Bellin... Bellin, like Helen with a B? <laughs> Bellin Aldecosea has aired her own emotional support animal grievance against Spirit Airlines. Alda Cosea and Spirit Airlines agree that the college student had erroneously been told by customer service that she could fly home with Pebbles, her pet dwarf hamster. Which, hamsters are pretty small already. So, dwarf hamster? Like, what? Something that small, I assume it's a smaller hamster, which is, so now, what is it? It's like, less of a hamster <laughs> not i'm not saying dwarves are less of a person or anything <laughs> uh her pet dwarf hamster uh but spirit airlines uh like many other airlines including united does not allow rodents on board just the fact that a lady is trying to get a rodent on board is um, so November 21st, okay, so this is back in 2017, Alda went into the bathroom at Baltimore Washington International Airport and flushed her pet down the toilet. 
Why would she do such a thing? Aldecosea cl claims that she was chased chased down by a spirit employee, which I picture like actually running after, like, excuse me? Is that a hamster? Uh, who told her to either set pebbles free outdoors or flush the pet down the toilet. Pebbles? Set pebbles free outdoors. <laughs> I didn't have any other options, Alda Cosea said. Spirit Airlines denies that any of their agents suggested Alda Cosea, or any other guest for that matter, should flush or otherwise injure an animal, said Spirit Airlines po spokesperson Derek Dombrowski. Dombrowski. It is incredibly disheartening to hear his get this guest reportedly decided to end her own pet's life. Which at one point, at, at what point does a does a emotional support animal? Where's is it blurred lines between emotional support animal and pet? Like at what point are they more than just a pet? Because I think. Isn't an emotional support animal supposed to be a bona fide? Like, it's it's more than a pet at this point, right? I mean, some people have their pets involved in, like, what, like family photos, and I get it. Like, I don't think I'm going to have children in my life. I'm going to have, like, a dog, and that's going to be my child, air, air quotes with fingers. But I would say it's more than a pet at that point. And if it's not, then what the hell else is it? Aldecosea initially accepted the airline's offer to take a later flight departing at 7 p.m. instead of 10 a.m. so she could find alternative arrangements for pebbles. <laughs> During that time, 21-year-old Aldecosea, why are you 21 years old with an emotional support animal? Uh, looked into renting a car to drive home but claims she was too young to rent one. That's not a claim. That's a fact. You can't rent a car being younger than 25 years old, which is odd, I think. Her friends were too far away to come pick up the hamster. She was scared. I was scared. It was horrifying trying to put her in the toilet. I was emotional. I was crying. I sat there for a good 10 minutes crying in the stall. Alda Cosea purchased pebbles at a Petco in Pennsylvania. Nice alliteration there. Let me say that again. Alda Cosea purchased pebbles at a Petco in Pennsylvania after the student developed a medical issue during her first semester at Wilson College in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Alone and afraid... Okay, what medical issue? Alone and afraid, she obtained a doctor's note certifying the hamster as an emotional support animal. Alda Cosea was flying home to Florida for medical treatment when the incident happened. Spirit Airlines offered Alda Cosea a voucher for a free flight to certain cities after the passenger complained about the hamster incident. Alda Cosea declined the offer. Why? PETA, uh, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, has issued a strong statement condemning Alda Cosea's actions. One phone call could have saved the animal, or some kind person at the airport could have helped senior vice said senior vice president of PETA flushing a living a living being <laughs> flushing a living being down a toilet is not only cruel but also illegal and both the person who killed the animal and spirit Airlines, if an employee did in fact advise a woman to drown the hamster should be charged this must have been a horrific terrifying death after hearing about the emotional support peacock incident at Newark, Alda Cosea decided to share her story with the Miami Herald this week. She is also considering suing Spirit Airlines for the conflicting instructions that wound up per pressuring her into making an anguished decision with a pet certified by her doctor as an emotional support animal. She, Pebbles, was so loving. Wait. Didn't it say Pebbles was a him? Oh, no, it didn't. 
I thought it was a, not that the gender of the dwarf hamster is at any, she pebbles was so loving. It was like she knew I needed somebody, Aldicosea said. Okay. Loving as Pebbles may have been, Aldicosea has moved on. Her lawyer, Adam Goodman, says she has purchased a replacement hamster. How Jewish is Adam Goodman? Adam Goodman, the lawyer. Airlines have scrambled to rein in their emotional support animal policies in recent months after a drastic spike in animal travel and related incidents. Delta clamped down on its restrictions in January of this year, and United followed suit in February. And short after, we all know that ha what happened. Uh, the United Airlines with, I forget the dog's name, but the how they put the dog up in the above compartment, and the dog died, um, which is super sad. I mean, it's not not to take away from Pebbles, but you know. It, uh, a dog is a little more, at least to me, I don't know. I don't know, dude. Why do people fly with their animals? Like, I mean, not that you're going to put your hamster in like a kennel. And especially emotional support animal. Like, I don't know, man. If you have an animal, if you have a pet that means that much, and you rely on it, like, that's kind of what the whole thing is, like, it's an emotional support animal, so it's kind of, like, very necessary in your life. Why? Why? You're... Just to flush it down the toilet. Flushing a hamster down the toilet! It's not a dead goldfish! Why would she think that and not to release it into, like, whatever? I mean, it's a jungle out there for pebbles if you were to, like, put it outside. Or just go up to, like, a kid at the, I don't know, an emotional support dwarf hamster. Like, what's the difference between that and, like, a, a stuffed animal hamster? Like, just, isn't that what teddy bears were for? Like, teddy bears were OG emotional support animals. But people need, like, living things to take care of now? Just get a Tamagotchi. <laughs> right? Is that is that the chain of emotional support animals has, that has come? Like, first you had, like, whatever the hell... I don't know. Like, there was Pet Rocks. And then there were like there was teddy bears, pet rocks, and those don't harm anybody unless thrown. But you're not gonna flush a rock down the toilet, like <laughs> I don't know, man. This is like emotional support animals is such a like I I think it's a joke, man. Like people just need to be able to cope with fucking life. Like you deal, you deal with it or you can't. And the people that can't like find another human being that can help you. Don't manifest all of your whatever emotional needs into an animal. Like I know animals are just going to love you no matter what. Because like they go to you to survive really if they're domesticated. The... It's just too much, man. The, so, that, I mean, that's it. That's the story of Pebbles. And since then, she's gotten another dwarf hamster, which she probably, she probably got in Florida with her parents. Big emotional thing. And then, how's she going to get back home? She can't... She, I bet she got back to Baltimore having one of her parents drive her so she can keep the hamster alive. That just seems so bonkers, man. Emotional support animals are like, it's just more 2018 bullshit that goes on, I think. And, you know, I think this will be a constant 
a constant uh, subject that comes up because more and more people are going to have emotional support animal stories and it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And also, I think the animals are because I think there's going to be giraffes. I think there's going to be like bonkers animal things going on with people where it's like, yeah, it's my emotional support hippo. And they're just going to have a hippo on a leash and like, what the hell, man? I don't get it. Like, I finally saw, as I was looking up this story, I finally saw, like, footage of the lady that had the emotional support peacock, who she put on her shoulder, and that thing, like, it adjusted its feathers while it was on the shoulders, and it was like, whoa. Like, if there was... <laughs> If Donald Trump was standing behind that lady, his hair would have flown off. Like, the the fan of feathers that that peak, like, wow. Like, oh, my God. And this is your emotional support animal. The, ridiculous. I, I don't know. It, it just, it leaves me speechless, man. <laughs> like, I would love to hear other people's because you're just hearing my side of the story. And as you hear me talk about it and, you know, whatever, I would love to hear what other people think about emotional support animals, both sides. And I'm open to suggestions, you know, for, obviously you can see where I stand, where it's like, come on. So, I don't know. It's always going to be something <laughs> that I think about. And there's only going to be more stories because people are going to travel because that's what people do. People get on planes. Animals don't get on planes. Animals are not supposed to be on planes. There are animals that can fly. Those animals get to travel. They were created to travel with feathers. You know, they fly. That's how those animals get around. Like... I was listening to an Ellen DeGeneres uh, stand-up, and she was like, whenever there's a fly on an airplane, I'm like, oh, maybe it wasn't Ellen. I think it was, though. But, like, imagine being a fly that, like, as they're closing the plane, like, in Los Angeles, you're a fly. And you fly into the, the plane and fly. Okay, now there's Inception flying going on. And you land in Florida, let's say. And the, you know, the plane opens up and you're the fly and you get out of the plane. What the hell? Now you're in Florida. Not that there's reasoning that a, a fly has, but now you're in Florida and you're like, okay, what the hell? I don't know. That, like that kind of, like who thinks of that one? But also like, what? What then? I don't know. Random, I know. But do you ever think of that? Probably not, but now you are. And that blows my mind. Imagine being a fly that gets on an airplane and you go to wherever and you get off the plane and you're like, what the hell is this? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I mentioned I put in my two weeks. Uh, at, at the uh, at the coffee shop and that two weeks is is up uh, at the end of this week actually and uh, I plan on you know like kind of refiguring stuff out um, kind of hitting the reset button on on stuff mentally um, and there was just something about like uh, it was something about just looking at at uh at where I was at and where I could be and what I was just like allowing myself to sit in um because I I feel like sitting and just doing the same thing every day just gets real old and we're all creatures of habit you know like we get in this pace of life and you're just like yeah this is what I do and that mindset of like oh, I have to go to work like I don't like where I work and then like, well, it pays the bills and you just like shrug your shoulders and you just go on with it. And you're like, well, at least it's paying the bills and you're not happy. Fuck that, dude. 
Get the hell, go somewhere else. You're a perfectly capable human being. And I took so many of these mornings and like even thinking about like what I'm doing with schizophrenia and everything. And there was so many times where I would sit there and like, I'm not happy with what I'm doing. I know I could be more than this. I could be doing more with this. I could be happier doing anything else. Just changing your environment sometimes does it. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm out. And I just, I just went for it. Put in my two weeks. And I was like, yeah, I have full confidence. No matter where I interview, I will land that job. Because there hasn't been an interview that I've gone to. Well, there was one that I was like super underqualified for, but I nailed the interview. And they were like, yeah, really good interview. But we went with someone else that had this like years of experience in this area, but we really liked how you came prepared for the interview. Um, we'll keep you in mind for other, you know, openings down the road if that happens. Um, but we, we really liked who, like how you came in, how you carried yourself, all that stuff. So I'm, I'm a really good interviewer and I have no doubt in my mind. If I interview somewhere where I have experience in that place, I will get the job. And I know that sounds arrogant and like a little conceited, but whatever. That's just kind of the mindset that I'm, that I'm in, that I have to be in, and that I'm going to keep going, you know? Which has taken so long for me to, um, to get to that point. But I started to notice that like I would start... I would start my day, I would start my day and I would have like, you know, like a good morning, like a couple hours to myself and I would, you know, like have coffee, breakfast, get caught up with like, um, just like planning out stuff for the podcast and like checking out YouTube, looking at other people's content and like seeing kind of like the flow of how other people do things. Um, cause I'm constantly, I want to keep learning how to make this better and I know it's still going to be my stuff and I'm going to work on like my own branding of things, like kind of like an underlining theme across the board that people come to Schizophrenia for. Um, and that, I mean, that's a lot of the behind the, the, the scenes thoughts that I have, um, as I move forward with this stuff, but, um, which has given me a lot of confidence with it. And I'm like in a better place. I'm more confident. And I think this whole stand up class, like it's calling on me to get up there and like bring it. And I can't be like insecure about anything. And I just have to be fully confident in me and my skills and my, my thoughts and kind of sharing them to the best of my ability. Um, you know, to, for people to listen to and that's I, I like just the progression of how things have happened I don't know and now I'm just ranting but I started to feel those mornings where it was like okay I work at noon or whatever and like I'm scheduled to work at noon and it would I would be just lost in my own thoughts and just like writing stuff down whatever it is and it would all of a sudden it's like 11 25 and I'm like, Oh, I got to leave for work. And that, how much that felt like if I, I would always like take a step back and really think about how that made me feel like, okay, I work, man, I got to go to work now. And that would completely take the wind out of my sails. It would like, you know, like take all of the air like I would just be completely deflated and that's not something that I want to do or that I want to happen before I go out into the world and interact with other people like that's so shitty and that's not me and that's not how I want to be portrayed by other people and if like the mental state of me having this job is doing that and even it's especially being an hourly job no one's forcing me to work there. I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm okay. I, I got to change this. And I know this is like a little, I mean, this kind of sounds abrasive. <laughs> I mean, sorry that I'm like, I feel like I'm attacking the microphone or like I'm arguing with myself or 
but um, I guess it's been a while since I recorded an episode um, for a couple reasons. One, all of this stuff that I've been talking about, but two, I've also like had a cold and it's just like knocked me back. Um, not to make excuses, but that's all those are. So there's my list of excuses that I'm going to just move past and put behind me. Um, and yeah, but going out and going to work and especially starting, like starting to leave for work in a shitty mood and then dealing with traffic and then having to be somewhere at a certain time with the, um, what is it called? The, uh, un like the not being able to control what traffic, how traffic affects me or like what kind of the uncontrollable aspect of traffic in general. It's, it weighs down on me so much, dude. And traffic is like traffic is so bad. And I could tell if I'm like, I can tell where I'm at mentally, like a good mental gauge for me is how I interact with other drivers around me when I'm behind the wheel, which I think I can, I can, uh, chalk up to being spontaneous or like having to schedule things or like having to be somewhere at a certain time. Because there's something about the way I was raised and it kind of, I can almost like relate it to having the last name of Patterson. <laughs> if my, if because of how I grew up, if you're in my mind, if you're a Patterson, you're on time all the time and on time means early or actually on time. And this is a lost concept for most human beings that I've, I've had to, you know, it's that, it's that idea that like, um, there's, a, there's even like a Brad Paisley song that he's like, he, he talks about waiting on a woman and this, this isn't, I don't want to get into like a gender thing. Like men are on time. Women aren't like, that's definitely false, but it's just talking about, and it's been so long since I've listened to any country music. Um, but it talks about like how he's outside waiting for like waiting for his, his woman, um, like his wife or girlfriend or whoever he's talking about in the song. And there's a guy there that is also waiting on a woman, but it's like, it, it, I don't know. Just listen to the song. It's a good song. Brad Paisley lyrics are the shit. Like that guy knows how to write a song. Dude's incredible. And he's really good at the guitar. Also. I don't care about country music that much. So, but if anything, I can appreciate good songwriting. Anyway, this is all, this is all over the place, but waiting on a woman, Brad Paisley, give it a listen. And that might get you into listening to other songs of his, like Mona Lisa is a great song. He just has like a great, his lyrics are so good. And just how he like play on words and all that stuff. It's just so cool. Anyways. Um, what was I even talking about, dude? Oh, being on time and stuff. Uh, but there, like, if I'm late to a place, if I'm late doing something, it, uh, it weighs on me so much. Like I can't deal with it. It's so stressful for me. And I think I've like, because of that, I've almost swung to the other side of the spectrum where I'm like, now I'm like one of the most spontaneous person persons. Like, I'm just like, yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to do today. So that, that that's going on, which is a blessing and a curse because being spontaneous, like you have to be able to just pick up and leave or pick up and go wherever you're at, which I think makes I, th I think it's it's better to be that way. And I don't know if... I mean, it's good to have, like, general plans. I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Like, 
this is the this is the point of my day and like the just enough time after I've had coffee where it starts to hit and I actually feel drugged like caffeine is for sure a drugged is for sure a drugged <laughs> uh but I think being spontaneous has made me a happier person you know like I'm not constricted by time and this is it, it kind of makes traffic more of a show that I can like observe and laugh at rather than it being like a race to get somewhere and like <laughs> the human race as it like sometimes literally sounds like it's a human race especially Southern California like there's times where I'm driving and it's those times where I'm like being spontaneous or something and I'm just going somewhere at my own pace on my own time and I think the people around me are like okay what what race am I in and what okay you win bro like Sorry to get in your way. I didn't see. I didn't see the uh, you know the the starting line of this race. And where's the checkered flag, bro? Like, where are you racing? Like, who the hell are these people with these licenses? And am I the same species of these people? Like behind these huge machines? Sometimes I don't think I am. Just based on like the choices they make behind the wheel. I didn't think I was going to talk this much about traffic. But being spontaneous, I feel like I think more of like what I want to do and like what what I feel like I need. Stomach uh stomach monster growls. And when I when I need to like be somewhere at a certain time, then I start thinking with my head and that just like I don't know. I I start to react to things rather than observe them and just like be able to analyze stuff around me and especially like if you're somewhere else other than southern california and listening to this you're like okay well that's it's not that serious but because i'm in southern california i have to drive everywhere we all have to drive places we can't just walk like, if I want to go to the store, I can't walk to the store. Are you shitting me? It's going to take me like half hour to walk to the store. Maybe more. And I'm not going to carry milk and eggs back to the house. Walking 40 minutes uphill. No. If you live in a different city, that's different. You can just like step out of your, you know, place where you live. And like walk a couple blocks and go into the store, get your stuff and walk a couple blocks back home. That's not the case here in, in Southern California, especially South County where the roads aren't even, it's not, it doesn't look like graph paper. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like shoots and ladders, man. These roads are like curvy and like, shoots and ladders is an old board game, by the way. And board games are things that are like, you... You roll the dice and you move your person squares. And if it's a shoot, you go down. If it's a ladder, you climb up. You move your piece. I'm just, I have to point out like actual tangible things because I feel like we live in a digital world that like shoots and ladders. What's that? Is that an app? Is that a game I can play on my phone? No, uh, well, maybe there is, but it started out as a board game. And there was cardboard and plastic and all this stuff. Um, but I, yeah, like g going places in traffic, I, f I feel like it's, it's taken years off my life. No doubt. No doubt about that. And like, I, I just, I, I haven't liked how, like, needing to go somewhere and needing to go somewhere is, is like, oh, I don't know. Uh, okay, that's, that's enough about traffic. I just, like, I, I, I'm, I'm in a time of change where I feel like there's, I'm like finally 
realizing like that I have the potential to really do so much with this age that I live in with like the digital stuff. Everybody's on their phone. Everything's like at our fingertips. Um, and I guess sort of in a way I want how I, how I use this podcast. Like I want it to be like something that people listen to and they like, you know, it was a good episode. It was like, there were some funny parts. It was like some just like sharing stories like random stuff observations that I make that like whatever like it's it's putting my personality out there because I feel like everybody can do the same thing but because I have the means to do it why not you know and it's fun for me to get behind a microphone and be in my closet with this back with this phone light above snuggy by the closet door just like chilling in front of the microphone like it just feels good it feels good um but I don't know. I, I'm I'm definitely tired of like waking up feeling like, yeah, well, it's paying the bills. Like, dude, like this job is fine. Vanilla is my favorite, you know, ice cream flavor anyway. I just, you know, plain Jane. Ugh. I, rem I remember listening to an interview back in 2012-ish. It was like, um, maybe it was even earlier than that. It was when I was, when I started, like, I started listening, maybe it was like 08 or something, which is 10 years ago. What the hell? 2008 was 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, but I started listening to Circus Survive and I, um, the band, <laughs> and I thought, like, the lead singer, Anthony Green, I thought he was, like, the most interesting dude. Like, just based on how his voice sounds, I was like, okay, I want to, like, listen to this. Like, does he sound like that when he talks? Dude has, like, a high-pitched voice. Like, it's cra his voice is crazy, but uh, I love it. And it kind of, like, it was one of those things you hear so long ago, but then you can... You don't realize how much it means to you at the time until like time passes and you're like, oh, when I heard that. It's just like this psychological seed was planted and then like it's finally grown into this thing where I'm like, oh, damn. But I listened to an interview. Um, I think it was a podcast or like an interview or something. And... He was just like, man, life's too short. If, if if you don't like something in your life, just fucking change it, man. I mean, it kind of sounds like that. I haven't heard his actual voice in a long time. I still listen to his music, though. But it, like, it's hit me to where I'm like, yeah, dude, that makes complete sense. And especially now, where like, like I'm still young enough to where if I change something in my life, I have time and energy and mindset enough and like my confidence has like taken so long to mature into what it is now but now is the time where i need to kind of step out and do this stuff this is kind of, like i'm gonna re-listen to this and be like okay like this <laughs> i don't I, I didn't mean for this to be like this motivational kind of thing and even if that's like motivational whatever to myself mm, screw it i don't know um, but it's just so cool. And my, uh, my sister-in-law recently, um, like quit her job, her like hourly, you know, like nine to fiver, um, to go into wedding photography and like, well, it's like, I guess not necessarily, it's not necessarily photography, it's more video, like wedding video, videography, I think is how you say it, videography, video, wow, wow. videography, um, and I like, I, I, I had breakfast with her the other day, and I want to have her on this podcast, because I feel like this 
generation and, and like the times that we're that we're in can really relate to where she's coming from and like what she's doing and what she like plans on doing and um but it's so cool like she like that woman is an inspiration for real and it, <laughs> it was funny I was uh, as I like as I tell people like, well, yeah, you know, I put in my two weeks and like, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, uh, I'll probably get into like restaurant stuff again, just cause like, that's what I'm comfortable with. And that's what I can just like power through the weekend peak times and just get, get tips and get money that way. But I really want to pour stuff into like my podcast, YouTube video, whatever it becomes. Um, but I, I, and even like voice acting stuff. Cause that's, that's the main goal for me. I want to be a voice actor. And if you, if you know me, I mean, that's something I, I'm very capable of doing. I just have to give it a hundred percent and I'm tired of like sitting around and like, yeah, I, I, I just got to try that. Like see what happens. I'm like, well, I don't even know how you get into that, but everybody has their own life. So they're like, yeah, well, good luck with that, man. I'm doing this. So good luck. But it's, it's on me to start the, anyway, God uh, but yeah, Katrina, um, she quit her job to start doing, um, it's like KAP media, I think it's like cap. It's her initials. Like it's also like a lens cap. Like it was kind of cool, but uh, I think it's cap media. I should look that up actually <laughs> before I like butcher all this stuff. Katrina's like just laughing and rolling her eyes right now. As she listens to this. <laughs> Uh, I'll link her, um, I'll link her thing on the description of the stuff. Um, but yeah, Cap Media and her like photography is incredible, but like she's gotten into video stuff and even like talking with her and like, I think it'd be, I think it'd be great to have her on the podcast and I want to like, I want to get that, um, I want to get that going because I'd rather have her share her side of the story and what she's doing to, as she like moves on with this stuff and like starts it up and, um, but I'll share her Instagram, uh, thing in the link and yeah. I, I'm it's 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 super cool like I, I'm a big fan so uh all that to say I guess um yeah I uh I just I just want to I just want to be I just want to be real with with where I'm, I'm going with this stuff and like this, it's kind of like a transition point of, uh, my life, at least, um, looking forward into, um, like where I think schizophrenia can go, what that means for me personally. And like, um, getting more towards where I want to be with like the voice acting thing, um, and where I can be. And, really just tapping into like the actual potential that I have. And I hope like, I mean, it, I mean, <laughs> I picture it, I picture this kind of being like, I don't know if you're, if you're just stuck in a, in a rut and you're just like going through the motions of your day, take some freaking time and think about like, and I'm saying this f only from experience, the recent experience where this happened. And so I'm like taking action. I, I'm not like, I'm not a motivational speaker by any means. I'm not going to have a freaking book. I don't have like posts on Instagram, like a picture of like a sunset and like carpe diem sees today. Do the most today for you do not know how much or what tomorrow holds not not like that but i'm like there's a lot of times in like 
instances where you just feel like if you take a step back and you're like, dude, is this like, what am, what am I doing? Like, I know, I know I like have coffee when I wake up and like, I do this and go to work and have the same shit for lunch or like it's Monday. So I'm doing this again. And then Tuesday I do this and there's definitely safety in a routine It based on like a life situation, having a, having safety in a routine where you don't have to think about stuff. It opens up your mind to think about other things like being a regular at a restaurant. If I like want to go to a place to just think and just eat in like, you know, like just whatever, if I'm a regular somewhere and I just walk in and then they already have, like they know what my order is and like, I don't have to think about that stuff right on. Like don't, don't uh discount that kind of situation but i don't know i had to take a step back and like what the hell am i doing man and how long am i going to sit in this pile of shit before i like realize that when i stand up there's like oh there's a shit stain on my pants like time to change my pants and get out of this pile of shit and so that's kind of where i'm going and i don't know I didn't realize where this podcast was going to go. And I kind of had an outline of where I wanted to go and talk about and everything, but I don't know. Like this is, this is where I'm at. And I know it was a little bit of time in between episodes and I've been like streaming, um, streaming on the, on the Twitch channel and stuff. And that's just stuff I like to do. And so I, I want to, but I want to, I want it to be like next level. Like I, I want to get up to a certain point where I'm like, okay, this is good. And then always be looking for like, okay, what else, what more, but also maintain like a certain kind of like brand for myself and kind of like a common theme throughout it where it all points to like me getting to where I want to go and stuff. I don't know. That's, that's that. You can, if you're still listening, I, I appreciate that. Like for sure. Like I appreciate, I, I appreciate, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate the listener, you know, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to hear my voice in your ears. So much appreciation. We need to become an appreciation as a whole, as a United States appreciation show appreciation to your nation um uh, yeah that's it dude i i printed i know this sounds like a new recording started but i just realized i printed out something i like typed some stuff up in my phone okay this blew my mind I'm just going to talk about this and then end this thing. This completely blew my mind and kind of shows you how much, how old school I am. I, so I, I type stuff up in my notes because I, I know I always have my phone. I don't always have like a pen and paper, which I, I wish I did, which I usually, I usually do like at least in my car or something, but sometimes I just bring it in anyways. Um, I was typing out some thoughts that I had for like this episode in the notes section of my phone. Okay. And I didn't want to have to hold up my phone and go through my notes as I recorded this. So I, I I'm like, okay, I need to email it to myself so I can print it out because that's all I know. But I go to the notes thing in my iPhone and I like go to the options thing, little square with the arrow above it. Looks like a kind of a house with like raising the roof. And I, I tap that <laughs> and th like a print option comes up and I'm like, well, I have Wi-Fi printing, I think like, why don't I try that? So I go to the print thing and this thing comes up and it's like, oh, that's my printer. And I had to like check what printer I had. Hadn't used it in years, not years, months. Mm, it's been a while. And I go to print 
and it says like both sides or one side and i was like okay well see see what happens if i try like to print on both sides so i do that i print and then i like look at my printer like is this gonna fucking work right now printer starts making noises and i was like holy what what is going on like wi-fi is a new thing like <laughs> so ridiculous and i'm glad i was like home alone during this time because i was i was like blown away like what is going on and so the printer starts printing it and i'm like oh, okay well see how this prints on both sides so it it shoots out the paper like halfway and there's like you know the notes on it and then it like sucks it back in and prints more and stops printing and it's printed on both sides the, i know this probably sounds like dude yeah dude the, you didn't know that no i didn't fucking know that printers do that and i could print from my iphone i could just take my phone out and print and that shit happens and i have a, a physical thing of the digital thing in my hands now just from tapping my screen a couple times this blew my mind monumental moment for chad here okay i just had to share that because that that's a game changer i'm gonna just print out everything i'll be one of those like <clears throat> i'll be one of those people that like will screenshot something i'm like oh well now it's in my photos i know what i can do with that i can just print it up and i'll just have like memes sc screenshots of phone memes that are printed out and like pinned on the corkboard in my room <laughs> like yeah that means pretty funny <laughs> i don't know man double-sided printing blew my mind wi-fi printing i knew that was a thing but like from my phone what so much also after it was done printing it was like oh yeah your printer's low on ink okay well you went the extra mile on that one iphone jesus crazy the times we live in continue to blow my mind um, anyway, I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I gotta go work on my, like, stand-up routine. I'm feeling good, man. I don't know. And I don't know if that comes across on the recording or what. And I'm back to standing up and recording, which is, like, like, helping me out, too. I feel like that's something that I missed. Just standing up in front of the microphone and giving it. You know? Things, things are looking, things are looking up. For for me and you know just i don't i don't know whatever i uh, 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 whatever um i don't know what that noise was but uh yeah thanks for uh thanks for for listening um the the support i've i've gotten and i continue to get um is like so much appreciated and i like how it comes up in conversation with me now where it's like it's this thing but i know that it's just going to be so much more and i'm so stoked for for what uh what's going to come out of you know me taking a step back and really reevaluating everything anyway uh thanks for listening um you can uh i'm starting to like up my twitter game a little bit so if you're on twitter at Scotophronio. Um, again, the YouTube thing is the Scotophronio podcast. Um, no video this week, but it'll still be up there. It's, it'll, you know, whatever. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this was uh, this was a good one, and I feel like I feel pumped. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, 